you can no longer break this into a parallel series circuit. Every, uh, no matter how you try to break it down to make it look like a parallel series, you will never be able to. Okay? So the only way to do this is to use Kirchhoff's rules, to do loops. Okay? You will try, tr keep trying, trying, trying. You will never be able to break that up into uh, <clears throat> parallel series. You might be able to if I don't have the bottom one. You might, I think you might, you will be able to do, do it. But if, if this, this, the two diagonals, that, that, oof, it's crazy. So what I'm going to do is show you how to apply the Kirchhoff's rules to this. And the next time we meet, uh, I'll do how to apply the Kirchhoff's rules to two power sources. Uh, I'm going to add another power source and I'm going to do a complex circuit. But this one only has one power source, and it has a circuit where you cannot break it into par uh, parallel series. Okay? So the question is, what is R taught, you know? And then uh, the, they could also ask us, what is the current through each? What is the power across each, right? What is... Uh, power of the resistors, power of the battery, and so on. So here's how we would do it. We use Kirchhoff's rules. What we do is we, we assume that there's a current here. Let's call it I. And then we go down this. Uh, uh, we follow the steps of how it's breaking up. So let's say the I is breaking up into uh, I1. Right? And it's breaking up into a I2. And this one I'm going to call I, I'm going to call that one I minus I1, uh, uh, I minus I1 plus I2, so that I don't have to introduce a third variable. I, you could introduce a third variable, but I'm just going to reduce the number of variables. So I'm going to call this one I minus. I1 plus I2, parentheses. In other words, whatever current goes through these two, this one is the, uh, the original one minus the sum of those, right? Then it goes over here. Then it breaks into, uh, I have to now introduce an I3, right? I have to introduce an I3, and then what happens here? This one will be what? I minus I1 plus I2 plus I3. Right? So this is the remainder of what's left. Okay? Now, what's the current? So now we know the current going through here. We know the current going through the down one, this one, I3. Then we know this is I2. What's left is determining this one. This one is going to be what? Well, the I2 will come down and join with this one. So you have to add to this I2. Well, if you add to this I2, what happens? This one drops, right? So you're left with uh, I minus I1 plus I3. And then that one comes over here, right? And then what happens here? I1 joins with this and cancels the negative I1. And then the I3 comes down and joins with it. And what happens? You get to I. This is how you know if you set it up right. You should end up back with I. You know, so now I'm going to choose how many variables do I have? How many independent variables? You have I, I1, I2, I3. I, I1, I2, I3. So uh, four independent variables. So I'm going to do four loops. I'm going to choose four independent loops and go across, uh, across them. And I solve four equations for unknowns with my TI calculator, simultaneous equation solver. So I go, let's say I choose this loop. 
9 minus, I gain, uh, I gain 9 volts, and I go down this one, 10I1. That's the simplest loop, okay? Is equal to 0. Uh, you know what? The, it might end up that I might need just, uh, hold on, let's see here. No, no, I, I, I will need, I believe I will need 4. Uh, then the other one, I can go across this way down this way and then across so I'm going this way and then down this way 9 minus 10 times I minus I1 plus I2 that's the horizontal one then go down the diagonal a negative 10 uh, I3 right equals zero. That's my second equation. My third loop is going to be nine this way, and I can go down and this way, right? Nine this way, down this way. Or you know what? That, that one includes too many things. I don't like that. Uh, hold on. What if I go... No, you know what? I'm going to have to do that. I can't avoid that. Go this one, this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, okay, so 9 minus the same thing minus the, the 10 times this thing and then down the, the bottom equals zero. That's the biggest one, right? It was the whole thing. And then the fourth equation is what? This one, this one, uh, did, we, did we do this one? Hold on. Did we do this one, this one, and then go down the bottom, go down the diagonal, and go this way? We didn't do that right. So nine um, minus 10i2 and then down the bottom equals 0. Now the form to the, the best way to do this is to put it in such a form so that you can then use the simultaneous equation solver on the TI and it just pops up all the answers for you. Okay? So put it in this form. Negative 10 I, uh, let's see here, 10 I1. So the first equation is 10 I1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then it's equal to 9. Right? So it's like something I1, and then all the other variables are missing, and 9. The second one, we, uh, you, multiply it all, uh, you multiply it all out, and you set it equal to whatever it is. The third one, you do it all. The fourth one, you do it all. And so here's what I want you to do. This will be your assignment then for the next, by the next time you, I, I meet. Multiply all those out, multiply all those out and gather them all together and tell me what are the four equations that you get. One, two, three, four. And then we'll use the TI and we'll solve it and then we'll interpret that solution. Okay, so work on that. Make sure you uh, don't make any algebraic mistakes with the negative signs and stuff. Well, actually, sorry, the I1 is actually the second variable, right? The first variable is i. Now what you could do to make it a little less confusing is call the first variable, I could have called this first one i1, then I would have had i, i1, i2, i, uh, i3, and then I would have had an i4. You know what, I probably would have done it that way if I was doing this. Call it i1, i2, i3, i4, because when you just have an i, you tend to